not your enemy So what do you want from me? Say what you gotta, it really don't matter It really don't matter to me Thanks for coming back to Baino. Just want to start out by saying uh, thank you to our sponsors. If you want to, you can go ahead and reach out to them. The first one going to be TOC Kydex. Use code all caps the boys, right? We do not get a kickback from any of these. Just FYI, that was by specific request. We just want to be able to help you and the company itself. And by you ordering from them, obviously it helps take off your order and it helps support a good business, but it also shows that their support to our channel is worth it. The next one is going to be on Javelin Concepts. They are actually the topic of today's video. Uh, same code, all caps, the boys, right? And we'll get into why I love them so much and the same ordeal, we don't get a kickback from them. All it does is support you to support them, which in turn supports us with support, right? Ass age. Anyway, the next one is gonna be uh, X-Ring Supply. X-Ring Supply is a great company out um, Midwest. And is Delaware up Northeast? New England. There we go, Northeast. Delaware's not New England, is it? See, look, we're having a geography lesson here, but shout out X-Ring Supply, I freaking love those guys. <laughs> they're on the northeast somewhere shout out x-ring supply those guys are awesome uh, a lot of our a lot of the stuff that you see on the channel we actually get from them uh without their support a lot of this stuff would not be able to happen um so all code or all caps the boys five the number uh those guys are awesome we, we really appreciate their help and we really appreciate you ordering from these guys uh whether you need ammo they supported the uh cloud rain 3.0 which we have a review coming on and a multitude of other items. So if you would, use, their, uh, use the code, reach out to these people, you'll get quality products and it'll help you on your order in return. Okay, so the topic of today, we're gonna talk, not plate carriers in general, but I will probably reference a couple other ones just to put things in perspective. This is the Javelin Concepts Ajac, okay? I'm extremely excited to actually bring this on camera. I've been using a, two or three iterations through the years of their products, uh, way before we even did the YouTube, back when I was doing write-ups. So I've been, I've been showcasing this product quite a bit over the years. The B-Jack, what we used to have, is different from the A-Jack. The A-Jack is more scalable. It's got additional features that the B-Jack does not have. The B-Jack is more of a slick version. And if you combine it with something that they have, which I'm gonna show you, it's like a grid system, or with the Jack Pack, you have a little bit more capability. Um, but overall, if you want just the most capable carrier that they offer, I'm definitely gonna recommend the A-Jack. Now, I'm going to start on the front here. Um, we're going we're gonna to kind of work on the things that I like. Plate carriers are very simple. They, they carry plates and they carry ammunition. They carry different things that you need, mark, you know, just all kinds of different stuff. But I'm going to talk about the things that make this one special. That way it stands out. One, you're going to see some similarity to the Cry JPC on this. And I don't know if they did that intentionally or not. But what, what, I, what I will say is it helps it stand out. And I don't care what anybody tells you. If you're lost, look cool. You won't look lost, okay? Um, but... Where I like these shoulder straps, we're gonna work our way down. Where I like these shoulder straps, I got a couple different examples. One, if you notice here, this carrier is all its own same material. So you don't have the issue of stitching starting to come out, especially over prolonged uh, use of time, uh, hard use environments, bad terrain or bad environment, uh, uh, like weather considerations and whatnot, and especially under load. Under load, you can have the, the plates start to sag and whatnot. Um, and, and with this, you do not have that. And I'll go into another reason why you don't have rear plate, uh, rear plate sag here in a minute. But so there is that. It's all the same material, and that is, to me, a very big thing. He corrected me when I did a write-up. Uh, it's, it's not a mixture of 1000D and 500D Cordura, um, and I'm not smart enough to bring that to your attention on and explain what it actually is. But I do know that it involves a process between Corduras that is not typical in most Cordura uh, products. Next thing on the shoulder straps, and I've got close-ups of these, so don't, don't fret, don't poop in your pants or nothing. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. On these shoulder straps here, you don't see any additional um, padding, right? Why is that? Does that mean that the carrier is just so comfortable I don't need any extra padding? No, that's not what that means, even though it is extremely comfortable. The padding that's under here is actually this rubbery style squish is what I'm gonna call it, and it goes directly under it, and it's the same form factor as the actual shoulder strap itself. So where that's a benefit to me, especially when you've got a pack on, you've got a sling, you've got all kinds of stuff, you've been moving in the field, you're sweating, you don't have a collar, all, whatever the issue is, you're not gonna have an extra um, bulk there that's gonna you know, rub up on your neck and whatnot. Now also this squish, it actually, the way that the material works, it really helps not rub when you're moving, right? Some of the plate carriers that I've used, um, not going to throw out any names actually. Some of the plate carriers that I've used, the additional padding can actually move 
with the carrier. And after a, longer than a day at the range, it'll start rubbing you raw and that's not comfortable. And one of the things is, if you're gonna be wearing stuff like this, um, fitness is, is main, but that can only take you so far. The gear has to work with you at some point rather than you working around your gear, if you can, right? Um, two, let me go ahead and take these off. Got Yao Ming demonstrating for me. Um, you've got this vertical section that allows you to attach, uh, you know, female end buckles, kind of like what you would do on a cummerbund if you were rocking a chest rig. A lot of the guys that were that I served with, we were forced to rock that stupid chest rig that we got issued. Anyway, separate note. Um, and this allows you to do things, which I'll touch into in depth after, to attach different stuff. That's really cool. I like that because it's not just an afterthought. These shoulder straps really actually were designed by someone that's used gear in a capacity that he actually had to stitch things himself to make them work, right? So he created this with that in mind, and this is a huge help. It's also got, which again, we've got some close-ups, uh, but it's got integrated cable management on both sides. You got two Velcro tabs on each side that can work in conjunction with your straps here. Um, it works in conjunction, so say you've got you know, a camelback on there, or say you've got, you know, comms that are somehow running through here, which, you know, you could actually order from them the extra additional tabs and you could work them onto the molly on your cummerbund. Um, so the shoulder straps are a huge win for me because they're not just an afterthought that, hey, they need to carry plates. Oh, hey, you can Velcro something around it, create more bulk, yada, yada, nothing like that. The shoulder straps are a huge win for me. Also, the shoulder straps, the way that they integrate into the back, and this is huge for me. A lot of plate carriers are very hard, in my experience, to get the rear plate bag to not sag on you. And what ends up happening, if you try to adjust the rear plate bag, fuck you wasp, um, if you try to adjust the rear plate bag to not sag on you, what's going to end up happening is your front plate bag isn't going to sit where it needs to. Not every carrier, right, because there's different ways to get around it, but a lot of them. The way that this works, you adjust the front bag to where it needs to go automatically the rear bag, the way it works, it's going to adjust itself to the point that it needs to go. And I challenge anyone to set your front plate bag and find a way that you're not gonna make the rear plate bag go where it needs to go. All right, so pretty traditional here, what we've got, <clears throat> we've got obviously got these horizontal slots. We've got some vertical slots here. Obviously that's very self-explanatory if you've ever actually looked at anything plate carrier related. There's different ways that you can attach stuff. So we've got this chest rig here. And this one is by, um, who is it, Paratro Paratrooper Gear? Parachuter. Parachuter Gear, there we go. Just learned about them today. This is not mine, full disclosure. Um, but I'm probably going to pick one up. I really like this. Anyway, you got the, uh, the male buckle here. What you do is you put a female uh, quasi buckle or whatever it's called. I'm IR monkey. And it would fit just like so, right? Just like that. And what it does... The way that these are, since it's laser cut, it actually fits very tight rather than if, if it's um, stitched on traditionally, so where it's going to kind of stick out just a little bit. It doesn't make a huge difference, but the tighter you can get stuff to your body, in my experience, the less moving the gear is going to do with you moving, which again is just going to be a comfort thing. And when you're wearing this stuff over, you know, 12, 14 day periods and you don't get a whole lot of chance to take the stuff off, um, I, I appreciate comfort, just simply put. Um, obviously, it's got a slot right here, so say that you want to use G hooks. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of G-hooks. Um, these have not been an issue, and I'll get into why, um, or, well, with this specific placard, but these haven't been an issue because the way this placard works, I'm really not having to, to take it off because I'm using the first spear tubes. But say you're not using the tubes, you're just using actual traditional, you know, uh, Velcro that goes under this, which this does have the Velcro under the placard. Um, what can happen is they can kind of work themselves out or they can work themselves half out. And when that happens, you know, you're doing this and then you put it back on. Next thing you know, this thing pops out. Now you're trying to fix it. And that's, that's just kind of a pain in the ass. Again, it hasn't been an issue on here because I'm using the first spear tubes, but they are convenient because you don't have to worry about sliding in buckles and everything else. You can just whoop, whoop, done. <clears throat> now onto the placard itself. The placard is extremely simple that it comes with. Um, and that's okay, right? So it's got the front molly attachments here. So if you wanted to, you could attach whatever you want to. And they actually have a couple different iterations of this placard. This is just the very basic one. Um, it doesn't have a insert at the bottom, but it does have this front piece right here. Um, if you can see, and I'll get some close-ups, I can't really squish it. And what that does is it provides, it provides some resistance there so your mags aren't just gonna fall out. So you don't have to use, uh, you know, like the, I'm gonna call it stretchy 550 cord. You don't have to use the stretchy 550 cord in order for your mags to stay there. And, and I like that. Now, 
negative to having the stuff extremely tight to your body rather than whenever I have the, the rifle, right, and I go to grab, I'm having to actually grab like this and then I'm having to pull out and then I'm getting my purchase so I don't do this weird underhand granny, granny shot into the magazine, right? Um, so there is that. The tighter you get to your body, in my experience, um, the little bit more difficult the reload's gonna be in terms of emergency reload, but as uh, Blake, Flannery, Blake Flannery likes to say, reload on your time, not the enemy's time. So there's that. And use a belt. Uh, all right. So what we're gonna get into right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Shout out Meal Team 6. Those guys are awesome. Shout out Mid-Tier Snobs. Those guys are definitely awesome. Don't be mean to them. They'll make your dad hurt. All right. So what we can see here, Obviously, I've got the Velcro here, so I can attach my danglers and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. That's a good thing because me personally, if I'm running a, a small IFAC on my body, I'll just leave it done. Uh, if I'm running an IFAC, I like to just have it right here. And the reason that I like it to have it right here is it's easy access. I don't have to take up space on my cummerbund and whatnot. And if I don't want to run a belt in that instance, there's plenty of times where I just did not want to run a belt, especially if I have a uh, main pack on that's going to have a, a belt come across. It just kind of gets all in the way. It starts hurting your hips a little bit. Um, it's it's just nice now um the way that the <clears throat> the way this onward works just random note it's very tight to the carrier itself the velcro extension is kind of long and then the body of this itself is very short so you're not going to fit a whole bunch of stuff in there but what it does in conjunction with everything else on this front plate bag that is tight again it's a comfort thing so you don't have this thing flopping around and going crazy or even dangling super low it's in the name dangler but it's not dangling super low to the point to where it might be hitting you in the groin or just you, you almost don't know you don't notice it's there um, now you could say that has to do with the onward pouch itself but i think it's more of an in conjunction with thing i think when you put quality gear together that is thought out with other quality gear that's thought out and you mix it with experience from yourself and then with people that have also uh, worked in those environments you soak in what they have you can really utilize this stuff to its fullest capability the only reason that i have this triple mag shingle on here right now one i gotta get a tracer tactical rig this is what it is. Two, I wanted to showcase what it actually ships with. And again, you have multiple different options. Speaking of this, uh, the first spear tubes, these are not the removable type. All right, so these are permanent. What that allows, let's see if it's on this side. Yep. What that allows, it makes it easier when they're actually integrated into the placard. This is a bonus of the placard. When you have these wing systems right here, they actually do not get in the way. Whereas if these were uh, put onto the Velcro under the placard to where they can get in the way with the wing system and they can start kind of just making it, a, taking away the benefit of a first spear tube, which is the speed, right? Um, and just the convenience level of it. So I do appreciate that design. I was a little bit bummed out when I first got it because I was immediately going to throw on my HRT uh, rig on here, but I couldn't because this was permanent and I had to get some other stuff. But again, that's on me for not looking up and not researching. So I do believe that's a benefit. You won't be able to move it, but it is a benefit in terms of it, it allows you to utilize wing, uh, wing adapters and whatnot to their fuller extent. On to the cummerbunds. The cummerbunds, they have multiple different options, okay? Obviously you can tell these stretchy, right? I like my stretchy stuff, I like my squishy stuff, but a lot of them don't like to hold up weight very well, right? Uh, there's plenty of companies out there, again, I'm not gonna name names. A lot of them do not actually provide the rigidity that you need in order to carry a shit ton of shit for a lack of better terms. Um, so what they provide in comfort, they're lacking in capability. These right here, and there's no way I can demonstrate this, uh, but they have a little bit of rigidity to them. You can actually put more weight on these, in my experience, than any other cummerbund of its type on the market uh, while still providing that comfort. And then also, you've got Molly on the inside and on the outside, and it's traditional stitched on, so you don't have to worry about any kind of um, laser cut issues on something that's going to be stretching and then eventually pulling out. This is, uh, and it looks like it's bar tack too. So it does look like it's a stronger material. All right, onto the rear plate bag. Let me see if I can turn Yao Ming around. Rear plate bag is very simple. You got your Molly here. You've got this under flap, and I'm gonna show you how this works because this carrier, the biggest feature of it is actually, I haven't even talked about it yet. The under flap pulls up, and obviously, you know, you got your Velcro attachment for the cummerbunds. You got the Molly attachment, but if you combine it, which I'm going to do a video on this in the future, if you combine it with their grid system, which is removable and attachable by the user while worn, 
Obviously, I'm not wearing it right now, so I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate that, but we will. Now, all of a sudden, you can have a, a back panel that you can actually access yourself and it's customizable uh, to the points where you don't have to be like, hey bro, can you hand that to me? Or hey, get my breaching stuff, or hey, can you just hand me my bladder or whatnot? Also, the big benefit, if you're gonna be in uh, vehicles like AAVs, uh, seven tons, uh, if you're gonna be on you know, helo operations or whatnot, a lot of times whenever you have stuff in the back, it's a pain in the ass because it's, it's uneven, you're sitting there and you can't get it off, right? Because it's a pain to get it back in. You can take this off, put it in your pack, or you can take it off and set it down next to you, and immediately right before you actually exfil from whatever you're on uh, or in, you can actually put it back on and you don't have to worry about the comfort issue. So you can go right back to having something flat and not have to worry um, about comfort. Again, I'm very big on comfort. You spend enough time in this stuff, you'll start to appreciate it, at least in my experience. Uh, let's see, now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the biggest feature, I think, of the Javelin. Now for Yao Ming, I don't need to be nice to Yao, man. He's looking a little, yeah, he's looking a little. You sound like you're a Chinese spy. Huh? You sound like you have a Chinese spy on the camera. CCP, baby. Anyway, uh, so with Yao Ming here, if you notice, which you don't, this is top loading. Why did I say if you notice, but you don't? Because what I've done when I posted this, that this is a top loading plate, you can actually see the plates whenever it's not worn. People wondered about environmental conditions. Hey, what happens? My plates are exposed, yada, yada, yada. There's not been one plate carrier that I've ever worn in a, in a field operating, like in, in, in like a field op or anything like that to where if my plate carrier got soaked, my plates weren't also going to be soaked. Now, does that mean that you're not going to damage your plates because of them being exposed? No, but I just don't see how that's possible with this specifically in terms of I'm, I'm low crawling or whatnot because whenever you wear it, as you see, and if you were to look at the sides here, and I've got close-ups, um, the way that the shoulder straps come across and, and fold over, it's actually protecting the plate itself. And then you've got this flap here, and then it's completely fucking you know, covered here, whatnot. The benefit to having top loading plates, it's not so you can run around like Warzone and change plates out, even though that would be pretty cool, but I'm not carrying all that weight anyway. The benefit to this, the plates are gonna sit and they're gonna actually rest in the most comfortable position possible because there's actually no, there's no leeway for them to move, if that makes sense. When they're in there, they are in there, it's sealed from the top, they are completely tight to what it is. This plate carrier also allows, you're gonna wanna order it in the size plate you have, but it has enough stretchy material that is also very, um, very tight that whenever it gets in there, it pulls the plate in. Again, that is a comfort thing. So a lot of this, this carrier, it just has to do with comfort, right? Added capability and comfort. Plate carriers are not comfortable anyway, so if you can get it, take it. But the top loading plates, I think that that's a, uh, it's a huge benefit for that. But also I've noticed that uh, anybody that's ever seen the carriers that weren't new when they got them issued, Velcro might be going out or they might just be an idiot and they might not actually put the plate in correctly. This eliminates just the human factor and then also uh, the, uh, the material considerations, right? So you don't have to worry about your plates coming out because of old Velcro, and Velcro is consumable. I think that's the term I've heard before. But also, you don't have to worry about the dummy factor of, hey, I didn't strap these in right, and then you drop a plate. And if you're running steel plates, you deserve to have plates dropped on your feet. All right, so as I said, we're gonna get some close-ups here so I can show you um, something that I wasn't able to talk about because it wouldn't have made sense until you see it. You've got these Velcro sections right here. This is so you can add things just like the little squishies, okay, and the Javelin actually sells these. It comes with two of them, and you can put them on the shoulder straps, but if you order two more or two sets, um, you can actually put them right here on each side. And what that will do is, is that allows a little bit more breathability because it'll push the carrier out a little bit more. And then you got this airflow that comes through here. So that is the solution that they offer. Um, as I said in the thorax review though, um, I've never had a plate carrier that actually, in my opinion, or used one that the breathability was a, uh, an actual factor. You're, you're gonna be hot in a plate carrier, just, just, my, just my experience. Uh, but if you're into that kind of thing, the capability is there. Uh, squishies, here we go, right? So it's got the Velcro right here. Uh, I have not had this Velcro come off, but again, you set it and forget it. So I'm sure if you just did this all day long, it probably would stop working. Um, and here is your integrated cable management right here. I'm not gonna undo it because I've got the buckle sitting over it, uh, but you got your integrated cable management and it comes across over and you can set this anywhere on here. You don't have to have it right here. The plates, okay. They're a pain, 
remember how I told you, this is tight, okay? RMAs don't use steel. Um, so you've got this material here. This does not have the same issue that I've noticed with some other carriers where when the plate is in here, it wants to kind of like fold around and then it's no longer sitting center line in the, um, in the, the bag itself. So that is nice. I, I do appreciate that as a design. Um, let's see. I'm not going to take, well, actually I will just so I can show you right here. Rear is a little bit more of a pain just because you've got more going on back there in terms of the straps and whatnot. We're going to do this the smart way. There we go. Okay. So where I told you all the shoulder straps, they like to automatically adjust the rear plate bag. The shoulder straps like to automatically adjust the rear plate bag just off how the front works. If you see here, the shoulder strap goes into this engineering beautiful design because I'm too dumb to say what it is. It's a buckle essentially, whatever. Folds into here, okay, and then it comes down into the rear plate bag. What's cool about that is you've got this Velcro section here that tucks the extra away. So you don't have to find what to do with the extra. You don't have to cut off the extra like some other carriers. Um, it, it's already just in there. So everything is meant to literally just keep tight into your body and work well. Um, and you can see that goes deep inside of there and you can see just how much adjustment you really have in these. Um, so if you're a, if you're a huge guy like, uh, you know, Blake Flannery who could, you know, kick the largest Ivan Drago's ass over in Russia, or if you're a little dude like me, it doesn't matter. You've got the adjustability there. The only thing you have to worry about is get the right size for your plates themselves. Um, back here on the rear, let me take this mag out. Since it's top loading plates, this is how you adjust your cummerbunds. Pull this down, pull this down, and a little note, don't just set them up like this. Actually push them over in kind of a diagonal. This will actually, this actually just, let me see if I can get it. It keeps this rear end a little bit tighter, um, and you don't have to worry about it kind of getting pulled on. And there's your extra Velcro, right? So this is where your javelin concepts, uh, cummerbunds are gonna hook up. I don't have my Gerber with me, so I can't measure, but it's a good amount. And you can see this Velcro is extremely, extremely strong. It's actually, <laughs> it's uh, very hard to actually get off. This, this Velcro is very strong and uh, I don't baby this carrier. So the product is gonna hold up on you. Um, whenever you do get the, the, the product at first, again, you're gonna, you're gonna probably struggle getting the plates in just because they're tight. Uh, but again, they're, they're not meant to be taken out and put back in like war zone. So there's that. And here's your over top flaps. So you'd put the plate in. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Put them in the right way. Just so y'all can see, it's a little bit of a pain to get it in. Okay, so what I found is I kind of push like so. And once you get it going, it's real easy. There we go. Make sure. All right. And you see here, it rests at its furthest position. So no, you don't have to worry about Velcro going out, but now it's sitting in just that, that the way that gravity works and the way the product works, it just, it ends in a very comfortable product. Take this over, fold it, all right? The Velcro runs across here and it actually runs down. So it's not like some to where, oh, I've got my plate in there, but now I set it and it wiggles. No, it's gonna be tight. So you keep that down, boom, simple as that. So convenient easy to use, end user uh, designs and thought processes on here, and a compliment to your capabilities. This carrier is definitely a win. All right, so to round all this out, I get very excited about this plate carrier because of the different things that you can do with it. Uh, it it's one of the most capable carriers, in my opinion, that I've used uh, in terms of just the inherent designs behind it. A little bit behind the owner, uh, he's a prior 75th Ranger Regiment dude. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, he was a sniper in the regiment, but I'm not gonna speak in absolute on that regardless. Does that mean that he's automatically smart? No, it doesn't. But he has the experience in terms of what worked for him and what did not work for him. He took that and he put it into his own design. And again, I referenced when he was in, I do know from guys that served with him, he's never told me this, he would personally be stitching up different equipment so he could make the, the equipment work better for him. Now that he has his own company, Right, he's able to put that into a fresh product. And for me, that's exciting because this isn't just a typical, hey, we carry plates and hey, it's got some molly on it. It has actual end user thought out designs that's just at the end of the day going to complement your capability rather than 
you know, you having to work around it. And that's, that's just huge, right? In my opinion. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, right? But then again, nothing that's worth buying is cheap, okay? Um, any of the comparable carriers, it's direct competitors, none of them are cheap. It's not like a, uh, a Cry AVS entire system expensive, but it is, it is a pretty penny. And again, you can use our, um, you know, you can use our code, it'll help you out, we get no kickback. But I do believe that if you get this carrier, you're not gonna immediately or even ever turn around to sell it for another carrier. It would be a carrier that you would hold on to and then invest in another one if you wanted to. This is a carrier that I truly believe is going to complement you. It's gonna complement your capability. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good the carrier is, it doesn't matter how good the equipment is, if you don't have the capability. So please do go get training, and then this kind of stuff is more than just cool, it's actually useful, if that makes sense. Uh, so, at the end of the day, definitely recommend the carrier. It's my highest recommendation. I've compared it against multiple different ones. I don't want to throw them out there because I don't want anyone to get the interpretation that I am bagging on those as a company or those as, uh, as carriers because something can still be great, but something can still be better than great, if that makes sense. And I do believe this is the product to do that. Um, if you do want training, I definitely recommend uh, Blake Flannery with Maneuver Training Solutions. I trained with that guy um, multiple different times. And I, demonstratively, I can show you the differences that I've had in my growth, right? Um, definitely Orion Training Group. I have not taken any classes through them yet, but they do release a lot of great content that you can soak in. Um, but at the end of the day, it's always best to have professional instruction there to actually overwatch what you're doing and give you real-time critiques. Um, you've got a whole bunch of other ones. Let me shout out uh, Tyler Tharp with Synergy Training, uh, Jay White with uh, Sinistrum. There's a lot of great places you can go. And I, I really hope that you guys utilize that because um, at the end of the day, again, you can, you, can, you can buy all this stuff, but the Second Amendment is actually about protecting individual freedoms against all threats, foreign and domestic. At the end of the day, this stuff is, is a tool. These are, these are tools to help you better do that. Um, and that's why I'm so passionate about it because any tool that can complement your ability and capability to be able to do that. You're doing not only a service for yourself, but a service for those around you that you love and you owe it to those people to be the best version of yourself. Now let's see Paul Allen's personal state carrier. <laughs>